All right, okay. After using this drone, I can say that I absolutely love it. What's going on YouTube? My name is Matthew and welcome to the channel. If you've never seen my face on the screen, be sure to hit that subscribe button and also leave a like on the video if you learned something. So in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing this drone after using it for about six months now. I've used this drone everywhere from client videos to football videos for my school, even just flying it around for fun. And yeah, I absolutely love this thing. I want to basically just tell you my experience with it. So you probably know everything about this drone already. It's small, it's portable, it comes in this great little case. I love just carrying it around and I actually didn't know this, but this pocket is actually for this controller. The controller is even so portable, you just fold this out, you can unscrew these, put them on the bottom. But let's talk about the quality. Have I had any issues with the drone? So yes, after getting like all this great footage, using it on wedding videos, client videos, just really anything, I can say that I absolutely love the drone. Personally, I don't see myself upgrading to a Mavic 2 Zoom or a Mavic 2 Pro anytime soon. And with drones like the Mavic 2 Pro and the Mavic 2 Zoom on the market, is this drone still worth it? My answer is really just yes. It's sleek, it's portable, it holds up great quality. Obviously this thing can shoot in 1080, 120, 1080, 60, and even 4K 30. The range is great, I've never had any issues with it. And it is pretty affordable compared to the other drones on the market that are this quality. While I know it's not the cheapest drone, it comes in at $800, it's still pretty affordable compared to like the Phantoms and all that. Now before I got this drone, I actually used a Phantom 3 standard. This was what I was shooting all my weddings with and really just anything that I filmed. And then uh, it came to a sad point in one day and I actually crashed the drone into a tree while filming a wedding. As much as it sucks, I can say that I learned from that experience. Obviously the Phantom doesn't have sensors on it, but this thing does. And does that mean that I'm flying it around crazily at 40 miles per hour? No, that's not what that means. It means that I need to be more cautious really like this one time i brought it to a washington hike we basically traveled to this um hiking place in washington called twin falls and there are three waterfalls at this location two of them are actually like tourist locations in a way and then the third one is like like a little secret i went here with my cousins and i got lots of footage of it um i never put together a video of it but here's some of it and yeah it was really fun so i decided to fly the drone and then all of a sudden this really weird thing I still don't know what happened, but it just started drifting off and this was such a tight space. I was recording the whole time, but like if you saw my face, I was freaking out when this happened. I mean like I literally didn't know what to do because I was just leaving it there trying to get some nice shots of waterfall and it was just drifting off to the side and it almost hit the tree and it almost crashed. This place was also really sketchy, it was like on this rock, but yeah, it was it was pretty cool. Now as far as noise performance goes in this drone, I haven't had much issues with it and it has been able to stay pretty clean. Now I will note that sometimes I have some issues with the gimbal. It's always tilted to the left a little bit. Obviously I can fix that in post, but it's not always the best thing. I even took this drone to the beach in Oregon and when I was taking it off, it kind of got dust in the props and everything. And I, I mean, I guess that's what kind of messed up the gimbal a little bit, but I finally fixed it by cleaning that out just with a cloth. And I mean, you can see like this thing is in great quality and I've had it for like six months. Now I bought two more batteries to go with it. So I have an hour of flight time, but I think that really just one battery gives you enough flight time to really do anything. As you can see, there's sensors on the bottom, also the front. There are no side sensors on this drone, but yeah, it's a really solid drone and I think that is totally worth it. Is it still worth it in 2018 and possibly 2019? I would say yes. It's great, I love it, and I haven't had any issues with it except for that gimbal problem. And yeah, maybe I will upgrade to a Mavic 2 Pro or a Mavic 2 Zoom in like years to come, but really right now, that's just not it for me. I mean, I'm loving the size and portability of this. I cannot stress that enough. I mean, if you don't know anything about the Mavic Air, if I just fold this up, like literally just do this and then that, bada bing, bada boom, look at that. 
that is the Mavic Air just folded up. Like, it's crazy. And yeah, I really recommend the drone. I think it is a great purchase to pick up. Comes in a nice carrying case and also comes with a great controller. But yeah, um, that's gonna wrap up for review, guys. If you've never seen my face on our screen, be sure to hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel if you are new. Also, comment down below and tell me what you thought of this video and what I can improve. Without further ado, I'm gonna end the video off here, guys. I hope you guys had a great time watching this. I've been Matthew, and you guys have been awesome, and yeah, peace.